Hi guys, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch and today I thought we would head down to the garden and do a little bit of cleanup that really, really needs to be done today. I wanted to take you guys down to the hay field and introduce you to some of the animals that we have here on the farm. We used to have beef cattle here on the farm but we've since moved into dairy cows exclusively and the reason that we've done that is because we only have about 20 acres of hay here on the farm. One of our goals is to try to have as few inputs from outside of the farm in order to keep the farm running as possible, particularly when it comes to our livestock. And we've been having to bring in hay over the last couple of years in order to feed the animals we have and we're hoping that this year is going to be the first year that we don't have to do that. So we've sold off our beef cows. We have two more young heifers that are going to be going in about two weeks to their new home, which is just just gonna leave us with the animals that I'm gonna show you in just a minute. We do have one of our dairy cows who's ready to calve any minute. I'm really hoping to catch that on video, but we'll have to see because sometimes they're pretty tricky and they wander off and have their calves and I go out in the field and there's a calf out there. So any of you that have been watching my channel for a while, you know that we have Great Pyrenees Livestock Guardian Dogs. And for those of you that are new, I wanted to introduce you to Mr. Cypress. This is Cypress, who's probably one of the sweetest dogs in the world and also one of the most fierce protectors, aren't you mister? Since we got our Great Pyrenees Livestock Guardian Dogs a couple of years ago, we haven't lost a single one of our animals, not even a chicken, to predators. I'm a huge fan of the Great Pyrenees and I have a couple of videos on the topic of Great Pyrenees and Livestock Guardian Dogs if you want to go and check those out. We do have a female Great Pyrenees too, Maple, who is around here somewhere. Maple! Maple! She'll probably find me, she usually does if I'm walking out in the field. We'll head down to the hay field and see what we can find and whether Bluebell calves during the night or not. I can't, I'm really hoping that I can catch it on video, so I'm hoping she didn't. And at the same time, that would be really exciting. Now that I'm walking, it's a little bit too warm for a sweater and a toque. I might have to get rid of the toque too here pretty quick. But anyways, as far as the animals that we have here on the farm, we have cows, we have horses, and we have chickens. We always raise meat birds every summer and we just processed our meat birds about a week ago. So they're all in the freezer. We also do a couple of turkeys, which we also butchered. Oh, and we also have a couple of ducks too. And those are around mostly for my pleasure just because I love watching them waddle around the farm. Um, I'm going to make a separate video about pigs and why we aren't doing it pigs anymore and just our experience with them because I think that might be helpful for those of you that are thinking about getting into pigs. We will get a couple of wiener pigs in the spring and raise our own pork but we're just not going to be doing it um, breeding pigs anymore. I have found the cows and this girl right here that is the cow. Her name is Bluebell and she is getting ready to calve as you can tell by the enormous udder that she has underneath her and I'm gonna show you a little trick here. Hi, sweetheart, don't worry. She's not gonna go after you. Hey, Maple, go, Maple, go. When cows are getting ready to calve, they get really, really protective. And so she's trying to kick Maple off here. Hey, sweet girl. Are you getting ready to calve? One of the best ways to tell when a cow is going to be calving is right here and her pin bones are completely gone. So what's exciting about this is that means she's going to calve within 12 hours. So there is, it's called a bone, but it's actually a ligament that attaches right here to the hip to the tail head, which is right here. And when that is completely dissolved and soft like it is here, you can't, there's nothing there. Normally there'd be a hard, what feels like a bone right here, but it's completely gone. And her tail head, you can see how high that's risen here. That is an indicator we're within 12 hours of having a baby. So that is super exciting. Her udder is absolutely massive. <laughs> I'll show you from the back end here. This udder, of course, is another big indicator that she is going to be calving soon. But if you look at her back end here, and if she walks for us, you'll be able to see that she's very, very loose. There, that's a good example. She's super loose, and that's another sign that she's going to be calving really soon. But she's a sneaky cow. She will usually head off up into the forest up over here and um, calve on her own and does an amazing job. All the cows that we have are really, really great moms. This is Buttercup and she is a purebred Jersey. And back over here is her little calf. So he's a bull calf, he's a steer now. He's been castrated. Hi, sweet girl. Hello, sweet girl, how are you? She is such a sweet, friendly cow. Aren't you just the sweetest? She's actually the black and white cow that I just showed you, it's granddaughter. I'll show you her mom in a second. But her name is Blossom and she, hi sweetie, 
and she is a little Jersey heifer. So she's being raised up to be a replacement milk cow for us in the next couple years. And this little girl here is her mama. This is fireweed. So those of you that have been around for a couple of years, you might remember when she was born toward at the end of 2017 during the fire season. That's why her name is fireweed. But she is a lovely little cow. She she's currently in milk as well. And she she is a milking shorthorn Holstein. And so that's what she is. And her sire is a Jersey. So her calf is three quarters Jersey. She's half Jersey. And then the calf she's about to have is half Jersey. And my Jersey bull, Wesley, is around here somewhere and I cannot see him. This grass here is really long, so it's really hard to see the cows when they're in here. But this is also an area that I don't think that I have brought you guys very often. This is our north field. And it goes way back over that way. One day I'll give you a full tour. Maybe we'll bring the drone out so that I can show you the property. Um, this is the forest and then all up in behind here, this is Little Mountain and our property goes basically the, to the top of the mountain over here and it's kind of hard to see but it's way back over there. So that is the overview of our little dairy herd and if Wesley shows up here, I will show him to you. Yeah? Okay, you're gonna ride your bike over that way? Okay. Okay, honey. We're gonna head back up to the garden now and the plan in the garden is to basically put the forest garden to bed. The forest garden is a permaculture concept and I have a whole bunch of videos on the forest garden so I won't reiterate everything again. If you guys wanna go check out that playlist, it'll I'll list it down below or somewhere. <laughs> but my plan now is to go in and weed it really, really well and try to pull out all the perennial weeds that I can get out of there. And then my son is going to come down and he is going to mow all of the grass all the way around. Most of it is actually clover, which is a nitrogen fixing plant, which means that it pulls nitrogen from the air and from the soil and puts it into its leaves. And then when you cut it and place it as a mulch, it feeds the soil. So my plan is to use the bag on the lawnmower and then dump all of that clover mulch onto the forest garden to act as both a mulch and a fertilizer. So that's kind of our plan for today. And I don't think I've brought you here either recently. So this is our barn. And this is where we store all of our hay. We only just got a round baler this year. We used to do squares and then we would store them in the loft up here. But these are so much easier to handle than squares. So you know how sometimes you have a plan and a vision for your day and then nothing kind of works to make that vision work its way into reality? <laughs> well, I'm having a day like that. So we have a ton of the weeding done as you can see here. And I have been working over on this side, working through all the strawberries. And the weeding part's going really well, but my plan was is that I was going to get out the weed whacker and go along the sides of everything and then run my lawnmower over with the bucket, or not with the bucket, with the bag on the back so that it could collect up everything that, I would, that I've put down in these aisles here. And then I was going to dump that on as a mulch back onto the beds. That was the whole plan. So, so far, the lawnmower decided to break. I don't know what's wrong with it, so I'm gonna wait till Dan gets home to take a look at it and see there's a bad clunking sound happening that my son thinks might have, something might have broken off on the inside. So anyway, I'm gonna leave that alone. And then I went to use the weed whacker and it takes mixed gas and I don't have any oil to mix in with my gas. So now I'm stuck not being able to do that and I really, really wanted to. I just wanted that finished look after with this all mowed and put back up on there. But the good news is I found a bunch of plants that were hiding in underneath some of the, um, the weeds and the flowers that I had planted and they did really, really well considering the fact they'd been entirely neglected. This one is one I'm most excited about. Okay, so this beautiful plant right here, this is rosemary. And this is not, good job buddy. This is not a hardy plant, so it's not gonna make it through a really cold winter. So what I did last year was I dug it up, put it in a pot, overwintered it inside, brought it back out, put it here in the garden, and it did so well. It looked really pathetic in the spring, but it's really taken off. And I completely forgot that I had put it in here and it was totally surrounded and overtaken by the nasturtiums in here beside it. And I'm really glad I found it before it froze. 
So I'm going to harvest a whole bunch of this rosemary off of here and dry it inside in my dehydrator. And then probably in about a week, I will pull this out and put it in a pot and overwinter it again and do the same thing next year. Rosemary is one of my favorite herbs, so I'm really happy that I just found this little treasure hiding here. I have a couple of the boys harvesting the rest of the squash that we had in the garden because the temperatures have been getting super cold at night. We actually had, have had to light the fire a couple of times in the last week. So we still haven't had a frost, which is pretty amazing, but I don't want to really risk it. So we're going to pull the rest of those up and then I'll give you guys a final tally of how many squash we ended up getting out of our garden this year. So I've decided to change gears with this video a little bit now that my original plan is not going to work out. I mentioned the other day that I have a tomato soup recipe that I wanted to share with you and it's so easy. So I thought I would head down to the greenhouse pull off a bunch of tomatoes and then make some tomato soup for dinner tonight and show you how it's done. It's easy enough that it doesn't really require a video all onto its own. <sighs> you guys, it's just such a beautiful day out here. I don't really wanna go inside, but I have a bunch of inside work that I need to get done too. So let's head down to the greenhouse, pick these tomatoes and I'll go inside and show you how this is done. It's really easy. Okay guys, welcome to my kitchen. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is take your tomatoes, wash them if you need to, and if they are larger like this one, then you want to quarter them. If they are little ch cherry tomatoes like this, then you can just throw them in your pot hole like that. One of the things that's challenging about sharing recipes for me is I'm more of a little bit of this and a little bit of that kind of cook. I generally don't use recipes and I also am really terrible at writing down my recipes and then following them the next time. Everything always tastes slightly different in my house. So the nice thing about this recipe though is it really is quite forgiving. So you can do a little bit of this and a little bit of that in it and it's still gonna taste really good. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is to get a large pot and I am going to put a half a cup of butter into my pot and melt it down. Okay, so about half a cup and put it in the pot. The more butter, the better in my opinion, and then stick this on the stove. Then before you add your tomatoes to the pot, you want to add an onion. I add an entire onion to mine. You can add less if you like it less onioning or more if you like it more. The nice thing about this recipe is you don't really have to chop anything up fine. You can take a chunk of onion like this and cut it in half and throw it in the pot. This soup's gonna go through the blender when you're done, so it's really super easy and doesn't involve a lot of prep or chopping. So I just have my onion chunks about this size and just throw those right into the pot. I love garlic, so I add an entire bulb of garlic to the soup. Again, same thing goes as with the onions. If you like more, add more. If you like less, add less. This is about the size of tomatoes. So once your onion softens a little bit, you can throw all of your tomatoes in there. And I'll show you what the pot looks like when we're all finished. Look at this beautiful tomato. This is a zebra tomato and it tastes so good. Mm -mm. Wanna go a little bit fancier? You can throw these tomatoes in the oven first and roast them. You can also throw in some red peppers in there, which apparently tastes delicious. I haven't done it that way before, but I know a couple of people who have. So I'm just gonna go throw these tomatoes in the pot and then I'll show you what everything looks like. So this is what it looks like and I'm actually gonna turn that up a little bit more. Um, so I have my onions, my garlic, my butter, and my tomatoes in here. And now I'm gonna cook this down until everything is super soft. And then I will run it through the blender and then I'll show you the next step after that. Okay, so the next step after it's cooked down, mine's been cooking for about, I don't know, 25 minutes or so, is to get out your blender and blend it. You can also use a stick blender. I have a Vitamix blender and I like how smooth it makes the soup, but if you want something a little bit chunkier, then you can just use a stick blender. So you basically just want to add enough cream to get it to the consistency, the color and the flavor that you want. I'm going to probably add about an entire quart of heavy cream to this soup. We eat grilled cheese with our tomato soup because it's pretty much the best thing ever. So I'm also going to make up a bunch of grilled cheese sandwiches to go with this soup for supper tonight. I have the first batch of grilled cheese sandwiches on the grill here. I'm going to add the cream to the soup. I'm 
I'm trying to remember where I found this recipe originally. I've been using it for a couple of years now. I'm going to look through all my stuff and see if I can find the original source of this recipe because I always like to put those down in the description box below if I can find them. So now that I have my grilled cheese sandwich is cooking. The cream is in the soup. We just have to finish cooking everything and call everyone in for dinner. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you again really soon. Oh, I just wanted to quickly mention, a couple people have said that their bell notification had been turned off and they weren't getting notified about my video, so make sure that you hit that down below. And it gives you, I think, three different options for the type of notification you wanna get now, so just make sure that you pick the one that you want. I'll see you again soon, guys. Bye.